had a recurring nightmare that uh, this other guy and I were scouting out Oshawa Valley. And in the nightmare, I was laying on the ground in the leaves. Then uh, NVA came up behind me and shot me in the back. So that started the watching my six. Like I said, I do it in the uh, restaurants. I do it in regular stores. Now, where we're standing, the room behind us is open. No, I, that's not me. But it will be with him because he'll be covering my six. I don't have to worry about somebody coming up behind me. Hello. Hi, Gildan. How are you? My first dog ever was my first service dog, uh, actually. Yeah, I never had one as a kid, never messed with them before at all. Uh, and then military work, it was just infantry. Uh, never a canine handler or anything like that. So my first experience with dogs was as a service animal. What you want to do here is you never want them to meet each other nose to nose, okay? Because if they meet nose to nose, they're meeting teeth to teeth. All of the dangerous equipment is all right here. Good boy. Good boy. I'll let him go to you. Love him up. <laughs> Call him to you. I couldn't do anything else. Being able to help other veterans and, and help them work through their situations helps me to work through a lot of my problems. I have to get out into crowds and situations that still make me a little bit uncomfortable, but I have to go deal with these issues in order to help other people with their issues. Going through the training, because of the PTSD, it's hard. I mean, you have to keep your temper. I like the way David handles it. He's very patient. One, he understands what a combat vet went through. I was getting into a lot of trouble. Didn't really have anything laid out. Didn't really have any plans at all. It was just kind of a fluke decision. One day I just woke up and went, you know what, I'm gonna go join the army. And I wanna jump out of airplane with a machine gun. I took a, took a bullet to the helmet. I poked my head around a corner and then I woke up in Balad at a hospital. I uh, got a brain injury from that and then I uh, had seizures as residuals dealing with that afterwards. The toughest part of coming home was settling back down, coming off of that hypervigilant state. Uh, you know, the cardboard box on the side of the road does not contain explosives, uh, no matter how hard you tell yourself that, you still can't bring yourself to go and walk past it. I actually met David in college. We were both enrolled for our bachelor's degree in business management. He said that uh, he really likes doing this and I saw that he had a insane talent and passion. So I helped him with starting his Facebook page. I built the website that we have. Um, free time after work, I'd be up until three o'clock in the morning just because I liked his mission. It feels good to help people out. We've kind of grown. Um, we recently got married too. So one thing led to another, we're expecting our child coming up here towards the end of the year. I didn't leave the house for a solid two years. Uh, I didn't go to check the mailbox. I didn't step outside my front door. So I did have a uh, counselor through Operation TBI Freedom, and she was actually the one that recommended initially that I might look into a service animal. And it wasn't until I ended up getting my first service dog that that, that behavior changed at all. Once I realized how much it was helping me, and that, oh, holy crap, I'm out of the house, I'm out actually doing things now, this could be good for a lot of people. That's when this turned into a, a goal to be able to do this for, for other veterans that need it. 
My attacks kind of lead towards uh, anything that can happen or go wrong. The what ifs. And all the what ifs um, cause my brain to just spiral out of control and then I end up passing out and falling. And I, the last time that happened I was pregnant with my youngest and I was at the grocery store with my oldest and I was trying to buy groceries and I woke up on the floor. That was the main drive was just to be able to take care of my children. I actually had to hire several different trainers from several different backgrounds. I had uh, an EOD explosives detection canine guy uh, come out and teach me all of his explosives detection stuff. A Schutzend trainer uh, from Germany come over and teach me a lot of the competition obedience style things that we do. I had an AKC trainer from the American Kennel Club. I was an evaluator with them for a couple of years after mentoring. I was looking at having to fly to Missouri to be able to get a dog that they assigned to me and then train every three years and pay for the flight and the room and board while I'm there for three weeks at a time for training. We were looking at like $50,000. Finding out that a service animal costs twenty-five dollars to $45,000 and you can be looking at a seven-year wait list before these companies even pull your application, then they train your dog for you. They select the dog, they name the dog. We've had people call us because they've had train and drop service dogs and the dog doesn't listen. 22 military suicides a day, um, people are losing their lives. How many of those people that are losing their lives are sitting around waiting seven years for a service dog that we can help them start working now? I was actually still in active duty. I just PCS'd from here to Virginia and then uh, got cut off um, while I was uh, on a motorcycle and then uh, ended up in this chair. I was looking online for a service dog training and I couldn't find anything. I see, you know, CGC, I see basic obedience and stuff like that, just really simple things. And it just took me some researching and then I found an article online um, for guardian service dogs. And saw that it's a veteran Odin company and that they work specifically with veterans. I thought that was just, it was amazing. These are still his brothers. He may be retired. He might not have been deployed with them all, but they're his brothers and he wants to help them. This is his fourth deployment. He was deployed in February. It's supposed to be a nine-month tour. It's hard to have three kids. Faith is the youngest. Faith was born with spina bifida. We found out at my 20-week ultrasound that she was going to be born with this condition. Doctors actually wanted me to terminate her when they found this out. So I said, not an option. So basically, she's perfect the way she is and she doesn't let anything get her down. I did a lot of web searching, tried to look at like nonprofits, um, tried to find a dog that could be donated to her. Uh, everybody said, no, she's too young, she can't handle it. I called David Proctor and he answered the phone. I told him all about our family and I said, non-disabled vet, but we are a military family and we do have a disabled child and he was eager to come and see her and to meet our daughter. They've kind of become like family, they really have. If I had never gotten a service animal in the first place, I, I probably wouldn't still be around. A little over a year ago, um, Dave and I were sitting talking. He sat and he told me, I need to go get a job, but I have the problems that I have with my PTSD. He, he was needing to get his purpose back, and he really just had a passion for training service dogs and helping guys. Well, one local veteran is helping out other fellow vets in Southern Colorado, one dog. I started making little posts and sharing it all over. And one of the local news stations did a small piece on us. Just kinda started leaving the house, kinda got a little bit of my life back. We started a GoFundMe page, and apparently someone from Fairway Mortgage and American Warrior Initiative caught on to it. His story was featured on Fox 21, and they talked about David Proctor and how a service dog had helped him 
and it helped him so much that he wanted to actually build a business. People that need these service dogs don't have the money to go out and get this kind of training. I just love that guys, guys that have already given 100% of themselves in service to this country and in service to all of us, wounded three times, comes home and just wants to continue to give, to give back. I think that's just an incredible thing. I had no clue that that was going to be a donation event. Can we add some money to go fund? Yes. Is that a little bit to your vote fund? He has all this talent and he has this big heart where he wants to help so many, yet funds become a problem. Little do we know, he's getting ready to get a nice business grant because they saw his passion. I guess we'll be uh, calling some people up and telling them we can waive their fees. In Colorado Springs, Tori K, Fox 21 News. If he can save a life by helping train somebody a service dog or improve the quality of somebody's life with a service dog, he's succeeding in what he wants to do. His mission is not over. The, the only people that really understand how you feel about these different things with the issues with the PTSD and the the combat stuff it's it's hard to talk to anybody else about it so hanging out with a bunch of other veterans and helping them through their issues that were really similar to mine just was kind of a natural fit they're the only people that could uh, could hang out with me for too long 